I will be reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version, please, I would invite you to get that copy of the authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Okay? Please, I would encourage you. Again, this video is not primarily made for the church and living God, those of us who are saved, born, born again, and converted, but for those of you who are being deceived by wickedness and being told that evil is good. Okay? <sighs> There's a lot of other things I would rather do with my time. But unfortunately, um, this is something that is required to do as I am commanded. And this is one of them. To begin, I'm going to be reading to you from the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Okay, If you do not have an authorized version of the scriptures and you have no interest in following me along in the scriptures, then please listen, please pay attention, and Lord willing, I will do my best to make sure I don't skip a groove or misspeak or anything like that. Okay? Titus, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. First and second. This will be the second, and Lord willing, hopefully the final one. Knowing that he that is such is subverted, suppressed, held down, beaten down, okay? Controlled, manipulated. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Now, those are masculine pronouns. Okay, yes, they are. But the point is, this will be the second time that we will be addressing this Roma army. And also, you men who watch this channel, uh, you are being led astray. You are being deceived by a wicked devil. A wicked devil who is serving her father Satan well and laughing at you all the way that she goes okay and the video that we are going to piece together um, has to do with the subject of pornography which this Roma condones We're going to look at that, but first I want to explain something to you. We are looking at an example of what is called the Hegelian dialect or the Hegelian principle. What is that? That is a, philo a philosophic term. Philosophy, wisdom of men. Okay? Beware of philosophy. Okay? Uh, and on that, very quickly. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ okay but the Hegelian dialect or Hegelian principle described in the dictionary in a dictionary is thus it's a noun an interpretive method originally used to relate specific entities or events to the absolute idea in which some assertable proposition, thesis, argument, is necessarily opposed by an equal, equally assertable and apparently contradictory proposition, antithesis, 
counter-argument, the mutual contradiction being reconciled on a higher level of truth by a third proposition, synthesis, or theory, the desired outcome. So, the Hegelian dialect, and we're going to be doing a video on this here, hopefully this week, uh, where we're going to be looking at the masters of the Hegelian dialect, the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, my brother already touched on this a little bit, but uh, Lord willing, this week the, that video will be coming. But in everyday jargon, the Hegelian dialect or Hegelian principle is argument, counter-argument to control and manipulate the outcome, okay? That is what this is, because we are going to see this, as I understand her name to be Chloe, okay? Or Chloe, whatever it is. Um, this is, this is, I got to hand it to this devil. She's, she's pretty, she knows exactly what she's doing. And she uses her femininity to the strength of her father, the devil. But you're going to see right before you the argument that watching porn is cheating and the counter argument that no, it isn't. And what is the desired outcome of this? Okay. Number one, to make you aware that watching pornography is not a good thing. No matter how this Roma or this Chloe will want to justify it. And number two, the desired outcome is to keep you men in it. Because you look in the comment section of this very video. At the time of this recording, this is her latest video. You look in the comment section of this very video, which we're not going to play all because um, this woman has a problem with profanity. Okay? But you look in the comment section. When you have a devil championing, championing or championing the cause of sin, you look in the comment section about how people are justifying that which is evil. Hence, Argument, counter-argument, to control the overall outcome synthesis, which is to keep you in sin and to justify it. That is the outcome. That is the outcome. That is what this... God hand it to you, Chloe. You, you're, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're pretty um, subtle. You're pretty worldly wise. You're not ignorant, young lady, if you are young. And you're hardly a lady, excuse me. You're very, you're very clever. You're not ignorant. You know exactly what you're doing. And um, as it has been made apparent to me, um, apparently, this woman tried to commit suicide before and even uh, did a video on it. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Because, Chloe, if you were to do that, you'd go straight to hell where the fire is never quenched, okay? <laughs> where the fire is never quenched, okay? You would go to hell. The actual act of suicide in and of itself will not send you to hell. The fact that you are not saved, that you are actively serving Satan and keeping men bound in the chains of sin, if you were to commit suicide, you would go straight to hell and burn. Okay? And burn. But see... What is going on here with this exact video that we are going to be referencing? And um, this, this, this. Hey, Chloe, you watch this. Try to do a video where you aren't using profanity. I challenge you. I challenge you. But you've got to ingratiate yourself onto men 
to make it look like you're on their side by using profanity. Anyway, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 11 on to verse 25. This is what is happening, men. Those of you who watch this to find justification for your sin. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 11 on to verse 25. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may, may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. Oh, and for that, hold your place here if you're able. If not, just pay attention. In Revelation chapter 17, until wine inflame them. What wine? Revelation 17, verse 2, talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church. Verse 2, in Revelation 17, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, a part of this video, which this Chloe introduces in a very subtle way, um, fornication, dear friends, is not always physical. It is not always physical. Yes, fornication is a physical act, yes, but that is not all fornication is limited on to. You can commit spiritual fornication. Okay? You absolutely can. All right? Fornication is not just limited to the physical sphere. You must understand that. Okay? So, the wine of the wrath of her fornication, keeping people away from the truth of God and his salvation, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Okay? But the wine of the wrath of her fornication to keep you in the wrath of God by keeping you in sin and having a seductive woman patting you on the head as you're running for a cliff for your death. Okay? Revelation chapter 18 now, verse 3. This is reiterated. Revelation 18 is the destruction of Roman Catholicism, by the way. Verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Her delicacies. What are her delicacies? Hmm. Go back to Isaiah chapter 5. Picking up at, uh, starting at verse 11 again, okay? Uh, actually, you know what? You see who we're going to be talking about. Let me get to this because here. Okay, there. There we go. Okay, that's better. We'll deal with that in a moment, okay? But, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night to wine and flame them. Verse 12, and the harp and the vial, vial, V-I-O-L, kind of like a violin, a stringed instrument, maybe, perhaps, the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, nor consider the operations of his hands. In verse 12, we see something very interesting. Harp, vial, tabret, pipe, and wine. Wine, as in verse 11, the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the wine of the wrath of Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, and Satan's army, the Jesuit order. Okay? But the harp and the vial. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. I say that because those who generally watch these videos are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. I want you to go where I'm going. But if you don't want to, just sit there and listen. Okay? 
Ezekiel chapter 28 is talking about Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent who was in the Garden of Eden. Okay? And we find something out about Satan. In, uh, excuse me. Whew. In Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 on to verse 14. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun full of wind, wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, if you are curious, what you do is you go to the book of Genesis and you read the account of the garden of Eden, the very first dispensation in the scriptures. What is that? If you're watching this because her the channel name is in the title, you're not going to be concerned about that, unfortunately. But in the very first dispensation of the scriptures, the Garden of Eden, okay? And in the Garden of Eden, there were three present, okay? There was man consisting of Adam and his wife because woman is taken out of man, hence mankind. There was Adam and his wife. The two are one flesh. God the Father. And there was a third. Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent, the devil, was in the Garden of Eden. Okay? This Tyrus here, he wasn't in the Garden of Eden. Okay? So our Lord in Ezekiel chapter 28 is addressing Satan who is commanding, controlling this king of Tyrus. Okay? Do, do, do you get that? So the Lord is going past Tyrus and addressing Satan, just like the Lord did unto Peter in Matthew chapter 16, uh, whatever verse that is, where he says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Okay? Beg your pardon. That's in Matthew chapter 16. Our Lord did the same thing unto Peter, addressing Satan. Okay? Does a lot of, uh, does a real big wreck job onto Catholicism who say that Peter was the first pope. Oh, excuse me, pope. Okay? But this is talking about Satan. Okay? Now pay attention. Thou hast been in the garden, uh, thou hast been in Eden, garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Precious stones. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy uh, pipes or windpipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So we have looked in Revelation about Satan and his church offering the wine of the wrath of her fornication. But here we see the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes. And here back in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12, we read, And the harp, and the vial, the tabret, and pipe, and wine. Hmm. Okay? Are in their feasts. Whose feasts? Those who wake up every day seeking to Satan and the things that he offers you to keep you in bondage of sin and to justify your sin all the way while you're running off a cliff. Okay? Okay, now go, let's continue in Ezekiel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Let's read verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways, from the day that thou wast created, Satan is a created being, people. Satan is not omnipresent. He can't be 
in 10 places at one time like our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ can. Okay, you read the book of Job. You see that he walks to and fro and going up and down in the earth. Okay, he can't be in two places at once. Satan has an intricate network of devils that communicate with each other to get word back onto him. But Satan can't be in two places at one time. He can't. Okay, Satan is a created being. Okay, he is a created being. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's skip. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue while we're at it. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Here's the, here's the sin of Satan. Lucifer. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. That thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And we'll stop there at verse 17. But note brightness. Note brightness. Satan, Lucifer, the anointed cherub, was covered in all these beautiful, glittering, precious stones. Very beautiful visual to the eye. Okay? And also we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We want verses 12 on to verse 15. But what I do... That I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, such as Roma army, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. And of course, that Chloe woman does not at all purport to be uh, saved. She doesn't even claim to be a Christian, and thank goodness uh, for that at least. But she purports to have men's better whatever in her in her eyesight. She's doing this for men. And as in the comments section of the previous video addressing this very thing, yeah, I, I would really appreciate it if uh, this woman wouldn't take up for men. Yeah. But, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no, no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light by reason of thy brightness. Okay? All right? O Lucifer, son of the morning, all those bright, good-looking stones, that brightness, and he is transformed into an angel of light. And here is where Miss Roma Army, Cleo, whatever her name is, comes into play. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 5. So, we see here already about this Roma army, how Satan is using her. And Satan, dear man, dear friend, makes sin look so attractive to you. Pornography, with all those fine-looking actors or actresses, whatever you want to call them, the models that they look so beautiful. But yet, it's sin. It's sin. And it is not okay. It is not okay. But see, Satan makes sin to look so beautiful. So beautiful. And you have a minister of righteousness, such as Roma Army, sticking up for men, minister of righteousness, saying that pornography ain't that bad, and justifies it. And justifies it. 
Continuing in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell, hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall, the lamb, then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope. They say, that say, let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. And here, Miss Chloe specifically. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. What wine? And men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. And what is... Miss Chloe's reward for justifying wickedness. Likes, subscribers, donations, popularity. Any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Men, this woman careth not for you. She is a minister of righteousness working for Satan himself. Beware. Please beware. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame caught, consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Now, now we are going to get to this video. Now I have to warn you, now we're, I have the the thing here on the bottom half for a specific reason. I have to pay close attention to this because of the profanity that is in this. And I'm going to uh, stop here along the way and um, talk about some of this stuff here. But we're only going to listen to a certain part because of the profanity that is in this, okay? But we're going to see enough to where you can get the gist, okay? So pre prepare yourself. This is... <sighs> Today, we're going to go on a little journey, a little vacation, if you will, into the mind of... Uh, now, before we continue, as someone pointed out to me, and you'll see in the thumbnail, okay? One of you pointed this out to me. You see that symbol right there? There, later on, there is a, par, a, uh, a time when you will see all of it. But see where that white dot is? Okay, from the white dot, one, two, three, four, f one, two, three, four, five, six. Six points. Now, as I understand it, that is this thing that comes up when a computer is loading, right? 
but that's six points. And the thumbnail that you are going to see just so happens that the six points of that coincide with the six-pointed star of Freemasonry, the false flag of Israel, the Seal of Solomon. You'll see it on the thumbnail. You'll see it on the thumbnail. That with the, the starting point, and someone on, this was pointed out to me, and it's like, I should have noticed, but the white, the white dot right there, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you'll see on the thumbnail, coincides perfectly with the Masonic symbol. Okay, the sign of the Masons. You have a satanic symbol brazenly put in front of your face, people. It's right there. And thank you for pointing that out to me. I didn't notice it first. Beg your pardon. But yes, yes. You have a six-pointed symbol that matches perfectly with the Masonic sign. Isn't that interesting? And the Masonic sign, the two triangles like this, and in the middle is the G, which stands for generativity or generative principle. It's a sex symbol. That alone. And of course, you know, see right there in this, the upside down inverted cross, and she's wearing crucifixes. Mockery. This is... This is mockery. This is Satanism at its, at its most subtle. And see, she's using her femininity to deceive you people. Chloe, if you watch this, you're in danger. You know, you can be saved, but I wonder if you really can because... You're doing stuff like this. You're not ignorant of the truth of God. You're not. My only fear for you, Chloe, is that you have gone past the point of no return where you have made your choice. But if you have not gone past that point of no return, Chloe, whatever your name is, you here, come let us reason together, you and I. But if you have gone past the null point of no return, may God have mercy on your wretched soul. But I just wanted to point that out because that was pointed out to me. It's like, yeah, you're right, brother. Thank you. But let's continue. Now, I got to pay attention because I cannot let one profanity slip. Come on. Delusion. A woman who seems to share the idea with many other women that if a man is watching porn in his relationship, then that's cheating. He's just not worth dating anymore. I'm here to debunk that, point out the idiocracy, the possessiveness, and the complete ludicrousy in that statement. Is a ludicrousy a word or is it ludicrousness? Mm, new word? Who knows? Watching porn is cheating. Not yet. Lusting after following, liking pictures and videos of other women online. Now I have to pause this because of this profanity. It's not cheating. I'm not even touching them. Like I can't even talk to them. That's not cheating. How is that cheating? The intention is there. Your intention is there. If you could cheat with them, you would. If you had the chance with them, you would. But you don't have the chance with them and you won't have the chance with them. So you hide behind a technicality of, well, I'm not touching them, so how is it cheating? Literally grow up, please. It is cheating. You're gaslighting her. You're manipulating her. And by the way, both of those things are abuse. Okay, so let's... All right, now, now, now you, you be quiet. Now! Now! Now, see, there's the better picture of the, the Mason symbol right in front of your face! Okay? But... What that fair-haired woman brought up, Matthew chapter 5. Now see, this is where the Hegelian dialect, Hegelian principle comes into play, okay? Argument, counter-argument, synthesis to control the outcome. 
control both sides of the equation to control the outcome. And the controlled outcome is to keep you in sin. Okay? That one fair-haired woman, the blonde, was making you aware of it. Miss Chloe here, she is going to speak some true things. She is. But see, the subtleness, you got to remember, rat poison is 95% good food. It's that 5% that is deadly. She does, in her counter-argument, bring up good points. But overall, she condones pornography. Okay? But what the fair-haired woman brought up was true. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 on to verse 30. Not Mark, Brett. Matthew chapter 5. Okay? Now, those of you who are of the church of the living God, you know this. But those of you who are not saved, you do not. This is called the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is not for us today. Okay? That's all you need to be worried about. A lot of people will uh, tell you about the Sermon on the Mount. But the Sermon on the Mount is all works. The Sermon of the Mount is not for us today, salvifically or doctrinally. Okay, This comes into play at another time period, another dispensation. That's all you need to concern yourself with, those of you who are watching this because of whatever. Uh, but Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 on to verse 30. Okay. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. The thought of foolishness is sin. So what does this mean? It means exactly what it says. You're watching pornography. With your eyes, you are lusting at men. You wish you were the guy in that scenario. Hence, you have already committed adultery in your heart while not physically. That is truth. That is truth. That is undeniable. That is truth. That's, that's the truth. The thought of wickedness is sin. Dear friend, thoughts can be sin. Okay? Thoughts can be sin. So what that fair-haired blonde woman did say was truth. Yes, it was. And you can deny that all you want. And in essence, in actuality, not essence, excuse me, you're calling God a liar. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that thy members should perish. For, uh, excuse me, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now, Jesus is not talking about actual literal self-mutilation. He's not. Um, the plucking out of your eye... Uh, you're watching pornography. Uh, don't watch it anymore. Your hand, you're, you're, you know, you're on your hell phone scrolling and use your imagination. What else you may be doing with your hand, okay? All right? But yes, dear friend, the fact is, the fact is, yes, looking at pornography is... If you are married, you're looking at pornography. Yes. You have not committed 
Uh, physical fornication or adultery physically? No, but see, as I said to you in the beginning, there is a spiritual fornication. You wish you were that man in that scenario. Tell me I'm wrong. And I call you a liar. And also in the book of Job. Okay, also in the book of Job. Okay? Book of Job, chapter 31. Job is for before the book of Psalms. If you are following along, totally oblivious to anything, take your scriptures, open them up somewhere in the beginning, and turn the pages towards your right. Uh, you find Psalms to your right. You'll find the book of Job. Job, chapter 31, verses 1 on verse 12. Okay? Here again, Job is talking about the covenant of marriage. Okay? Now, she talks about being in a relationship. Okay? Having a relationship where there is um, uh, intimacy involved, but yet not married. Not being married. That is contrary to what God wants for mankind. Okay? If you're not married, and you're in a relationship, and you are in a bed with them, that is sin. Yes, it is. Your problem is not with me. Your problem is with God. That is fact, and you're going to have to contend with that fact either now or at the great white throne of judgment whence it may be too late for you. So hear what is being said to you, dear friend. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why should I think upon a maid? Think upon a maid. Now, Miss Chloe brings up the argument, the counter-argument, antithesis, of, well, you know, just because you look at another woman doesn't automatically mean that you want to have relations with her. And that is true. That is true. Okay? That is true. Yes, that is. Okay? But we're talking about in the context of pornography. Okay? And Miss Chloe here brings up this fact of, of this fact that she claims that it's not wrong or it's not unhealthy that in a relationship that one would desire to have relations with someone other than your wife or husband. <laughs> Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. Okay? So with that statement, and you'll see it. You, you will see that and her say that. Okay? Or if, if we pass it because I mute it because of her rampant profanity, you can, if you want to, find this yourself and see that I'm not taking her out of context. Okay? But she says that it's not necessarily unhealthy to fantasize or to think about having relations with someone else other than your spouse. I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? That's something that you're going to have to contend with also, dear friend, who want to deny all this. You are going to give an account of yourself. You are going to give an account for everything. You're not going to escape that. Okay? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted to deceit following this woman, let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. Judge me, O Lord! And see if there be any wicked way in me. Okay? If my step hath turned out of the way, and Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by him. And mine heart 
and mine heart walked after mine eyes. And if any blot hath cleaved to my hands. Note the thing about the eyes and the hand there. Okay? Note that. What we saw of our Lord, ours meaning of the church of the living God, okay, the eye and the hand, putting wicked things before your eyes. And every one of you men, and some of you women that actually do watch pornography, you wish you were the, uh, you wish you were the man in that situation. You fantasize. You fantasize. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Satan and his church, whom this woman works for, Okay. If mine heart hath been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind on to another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is an hyenas crime, yea, it is an, iniqu an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction would root out all mine increase. Okay. And also the thing about pornography too. Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Okay. Psalm 101. Someone else did an incredible video on the pornography e epidemic who wants to be named, but I cannot. Um, someone who I do not care for. Someone who I do not trust. Nevertheless, the work that he has done on this subject of pornography speaks for itself and is very good. I give permission unto one of you, the brethren, if you see so fit to do so, to link that specific video in the description box, I will allow it. And of course, if he sees that you have done it and said, raises up a stink, then that's something else. I must give credit to where credit is due on that subject. A certain individual did an incredible work on pornography. I can't use the name. I refuse to. Okay? Sorry if that offends you. But Psalm 101, Psalm 101, verses 1 on to verse 3. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Wisely. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. That is in the book of Job, verses 28 on to verse 28. 28, excuse me, chapter 28, verse 28, okay? <clears throat> the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, okay? And perfectly, perfectly is to have the fear of the Lord in your heart, to fear God and not men, okay? Okay? I will behave myself wisely in the fear of the Lord in a perfect way, walking in the fear of the Lord. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Now, those of you men who watch pornography and are in relationships and are or married, what happens? You want to emulate what you see in the bed, don't you? You want your woman or your husband to be as that actor that you see, don't you? Don't you? 
you want to try what you see. And what happens also, once the computer screen or the cell phone is uh, turned off, what happens? It cleaves to you. How many of you who are in your 40s can remember music that you heard, uh, heard when you were 20? Hmm? How many of you who are in your 40s can remember bits of movies that you saw one time in your 20s or in your teen years? How many of you can remember the very first porno, porno that you ever saw? It cleaves to you. Hence the dangers of it. Because what happens? Satan is allowed, you allow Satan to get into your mind to put these images that, you know what? They don't always go away. One of the greatest things that I suffer, besides health issues, are memories. Memories. Memories of the sins of my past, which I am forgiven for. I am forgiven. But I will, I used to be a sodomite. Okay, I used to be a sodomite. More along the lines, people would say I would, I would be with whoever would have me. Okay, man or woman. Okay, but see, the Lord saved me from that and brought me out of that. But you see, the memories of those sins, those images of actually doing, of witnessing pornography, of Hollywood movies, of music, it cleaves to you. And when in intimacy with your wife or your husband, the devil, your flesh, think about this. Let's say you are someone who struggles, <laughs> struggles, who watches pornography and you come to this devil who justifies it. And you're in a relationship and you're with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend in sin and fornication. And all of a sudden, your flesh is being gratified at the moment, isn't it? But out of nowhere pops an image in your head about what you saw. Do you know what I'm talking about? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? It cleaves to you. And it corrupts your mind. Okay? Don't you for one second, dear friend, don't you for one second believe that watching pornography is harmless. Or as this devil will tell you even a good thing. Because, and another counter argument, well, my girlfriend or wife does exactly what I see in the video or vice versa. So that's so you're going to use that to justify it. And you as a woman, you as a woman, I am going to, in order to make my husband happy, I feel I have to do the need uh, to rise to the occasion of what I see in pornography in order to make my husband happy and vice versa, men. But see, this witch, this devil, has cast her spell on you. And you have a satanic symbol right there. And look at where that white is pointed, the downward. That's a mason sign right there. That's the seal of Solomon right there. One, two, three, four, five, six pointed star right there. And of course, the Hebrew, the, excuse me, the Jewish flag, that's not the true flag of Israel. The true flag of Israel is the, the flag of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? You have a satanic symbol right in front of you. With, and we've been paused on this, excuse me, looking at that inverted cross on her neck. Now, let's, let's, 
Okay. And now I've got to pay attention. Let's really pull apart this lukewarm, mediocre, highly repeated argument that women like to throw at men, which is any attention that you give to another woman is cheating. And I love how she threw that big buzzword abuse. Okay, now I gotta mute it there. But she's what her counter argument is exactly that that any attention you give unto another woman is cheating. Okay? The blonde was talking about pornography, but Miss Chloe here brings that truth up, and that is true. That is true. Any attention that you give unto another woman is not cheating. That is true. That is true. It's when you look at another woman with a lustful eye, that's the problem. But what she is saying here is true. I mean... There, are, I, you know, I go on walks. I talk to, uh, you know, cashiers. Uh, we witness to uh, uh, people, my wife and I. Okay. Um, and my wife also looks at other men. But see, my wife just looking at other men in and of itself is not cheating. That is true. Okay, that is true. See, this is the Hegelian dialect being put forth before you people. Okay, this is, um, hey, this is well done. This is so subtle. This is very well done, the Hegelian dialect being done before you. This is actually very well done. Okay, you, hey, Chloe, look at you there. You're serving your father well. I hope for your sake that you aren't gone past the point of no return. I unfortunately believe you are, but if you are not, come let us reason together, you and I. Hot shot. But, okay, let's continue. And are pretty highly aware of the fact that because they're men, society sees them as threatening and more willing to perpetuate abuse. Calling men gaslighters, but what did you just do to them? Let me walk you through this. Watching corn is cheating. Lusting after following, liking pictures and videos of other women online that you don't even know the majority of the time is cheating. Let me point Now, she, that blonde said of other women online, okay? No, that in and of itself is not. And this is what this Chloe is talking about as well. We're, I'm talking to you about the context of pornography, okay? All right? Uh, for example... If my wife, she doesn't do this. If my wife were to put like on, um, on, um, like a, on a waste book, a picture of herself with her, uh, with her daughter or with Zena, our dog, and I like it or something like that. Number one, that's my wife. But number two, that's not cheating. Okay. If I see another woman online with a picture of, uh, of something, of something it doesn't even have to be provocative that in and of itself is not cheating and that's where that blonde-haired woman was going offline with that as well but see in the context of pornography watching two persons male and female and there is sodomite pornography unfortunately but watching a male and female engage in sexual acts in front of a camera in pornographic videos that's what this is about. That's what this video is being made for. Watching that is cheating. Yes, it is. You're not doing it physically. No, you are not. But as we have already seen in Scripture, Scripture condones, condemns, excuse me. Scripture does not condone watching pornography, excuse me. Scripture condemns. <laughs> See, I misspeak. I'm not perfect. Scripture condemns watching pornography. Okay? It's like, also, if men want to want, look at that disgusting Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, okay? It's the same principle. It's the same principle, okay? But let's let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, really got to pay attention here point out the flaw in that. See, modern women, and there are a lot of modern men, seem to have this ideology that as soon as you become in a relationship with somebody, you're just supposed to be hmm, infatuated with them. In reality, that's not only 
completely false to reality, but it's kind of unhealthy. It is perfectly normal to be attracted to other people while you're in a relationship. Hell, it is even normal to imagine what it's like to have sex with another person while in a relationship. Now, what she brought up about the wandering eye, okay? Unfortunately, because we are all sinners and we cannot cease from sin. Unfortunately, that happens. Yes, that is true. And boy, that's a very uncompromising uh, still shot right there of that woman, isn't it? But, but, what she is bringing up is that we are all sinners, okay? So the best thing for us as sinners to do, I am a saved sinner. Majority of you are going to see this. You are lost sinners. Is to avoid, to avert your eyes, to not let your eyes see things that you shouldn't. That's why when summer comes around in the parts here in America and in other nations of the world, when you see women dressed as whores, wearing short shorts and showing off things that only a, a husband should see, it, it's, it's horrible. But yet when they walk around and parade themselves as whores and a man looks at it, the man is the evil one for looking at someone promoting their, themselves. See? Yeah, yeah. But what she is bringing up is touching on the fact that, yes, we are all sinners. Okay? I am a sinner. I am a saved sinner. Okay? I sin every day. All right? Yes, I do. But see, the Lord has saved me. My sin, I repent of them. And I go to the Lord and ask forgiveness of my sins. And his blood cleanses me from all sin. Okay? Sin is not going to send me to hell. Okay? Sin in and of itself is not going to send you to hell. Not going to the Lord that he forgives you of sin. Okay? That's what's going to send you to hell. Okay? And when you go to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, being a man, owning up and taking responsibility that it's your fault that you put him on the cross and you have the fear of him and you call upon his name and his save and he save you, he seals you until the day of redemption. It's called once saved, always saved. Okay? But that does not mean that once you are once saved, always saved, that you cease from sin. Okay? That does not mean that. Okay? You are still going to sin. You are still going to sin. And this is what she is touching on. But see, the way she is touching on it is to promote it and to justify it because the ends justify the means, don't they, Miss Chloe? Don't they? Don't they? Okay? Don't they? Now, I've got to gotta mind my P's and Q's here because this is, um, yeah, she, her profanity level goes up really high here in a little bit. But let's continue. Come on. Come on. That doesn't mean that that person doesn't care and doesn't love you. What you're doing is you're projecting your insecurities. You think that you're not as good as those girls that he's liking. It's not cheating. I'm not even touching them. Like, I can't even talk to them. That's not cheating. How is that cheating? The intention is there. Your intention is there. If you could cheat with them, you would. If you had the chance with them, you would. But you don't have the chance with them. Now, see, what that, what that woman is saying about the intention is true. Not necessarily with the actual taking action. That is not always true either. But what she is saying about the intention, when you look and oogle over another woman or another man, you being a woman, okay, that is true, okay? That is true. But that doesn't mean that if you had the chance, you would, okay? That is error, okay? That is not true. But see, what this blonde woman with the attractive bull nose in her ring is saying is that um, all men would do that. While we all sin every day. Yes, we do. But what she is bringing up about the lusting with the eyes is true. What she is bringing up is true. See, they're both... <laughs> this is the Hegelian dialect. Okay? This is the Hegelian dialect. They're both bringing up true points they are both bringing up true points but what is the desired synthesis 
outcome of controlling both sides of the argument. What is the outcome? Number one, making you aware that looking at pornography, one, is a bad thing. And number two, making you comfortable with it by saying that all people do it, it's actually healthy. Okay? The twofold of that. You got the blonde saying, giving to you, putting in your mind that it's wrong. You have Miss Chloe saying, well, it's not that bad. It's actually a healthy. You have the Hegelian dialect being put forth right in front of you. You have Satan controlling both sides of the argument to control the outcome, people. Okay? Do you understand that? Do you understand that? And you got Chloe here with the Mason symbol right in front of your face. And again, thank you for pointing that out to me. Okay? People. People. Come on now. Come on now. Wake up. Let's continue now. <laughs> with them, and you won't have the chance with them. So you hide behind a technicality of, well, I'm not touching them, so how is it cheating? I'm just going to stop that. If you Okay, think stop. Okay, she, she curses here. Okay. And she curses at 3.45, too, so we're going to play on to 3.50. Okay. Hey, Walk past a man, and you notice that he's handsome. It doesn't mean that you want to chase after him and try to beg... It. You women think that men are so shallow and you think so little of men's ability to have emotions, care, and express love for women that you've somehow wrapped up in your mind that if he even finds another woman attractive, then that somehow means that he doesn't love you and he just wants to bang her. When in reality, nine times out of ten, that's not true. Have you ever heard the saying, it doesn't matter where you get your appetite as long as you eat at home? That it doesn't matter where you get your appetite, but so long as you eat at home. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why thinkest thou upon why think why should I think upon a maid? So <laughs> and you husbands out there. You husbands, go to your wife. Say, okay, babe. I was looking at pornography today and I was looking at other women undressing them with my eyes and having the images that are ingrained in my head because of looking at pornography and that's something that pornography teaches men to do to undress women with their eyes, okay? I've been fantasizing about all of this so I want to come home and get you in the marriage bed and take out these fantasies of others on you? <laughs> see see what she's doing okay see what she's doing okay this woman is a covert feminist okay Chloe is here this that's her real name apparently she is a covert feminist okay we addressed this in the previous video okay she is covertly preaching to you feminism and she is exerting control over men by giving the man the illusion that he is the dominant alpha male when she, as a Jezebel, manipulates him. Okay? Using the tone of her voice and her sexuality to promote it. Okay? All right? Now, um, we're going to continue here. We're going to continue here a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Play, come on. That there's lust out there in the world because they experienced it themselves. If you're concerned that your boyfriend wants to reach out to the porn star he's jerking off to. Oh, okay, sorry, one, sorry, sorry, sorry. That, sorry, sorry, I missed one. See, that, okay. She says she says something else here at four fifty five. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But grow up, please. 
It is cheating. You're gaslighting her. You're manipulating her. And by the way, both of those things are abuse. Yes, watching corn is cheating. Okay, so she wants to talk about gaslighting, manipulating, but in that whole sentence, you just called somebody immature, manipulative, gaslighting, and abusive. So like, mm. She drops a curse word here. Not care less if my man watched porn, okay? If she does not care less if her man watches porn. She does not care less if her man watches porn. She just here, let me, uh, okay, gotta watch it with this. If he was leaving my room to go and watch it, I'd be like, okay, maybe something's wrong here. But men typically watch porn when their woman isn't around or... Okay. She said that she does not care less if her man watches porn. So she might not necessarily be for, for it, but she's not necessarily against it. That gray area, dear friend. Hence... She has no opinion for it. Hmm? In other videos that unfortunately I have seen, um, she even talks about how she herself enjoys pornography. I'm sorry, I let that one thing that she said. This woman is a profane, wicked, manipulating, lying, subtle devil who is keeping you in sin. Okay? Stay away from this woman, please. And woman, Chloe, if you, you, you got a satanic symbol right there. Yeah, that's with the computer with the, that's a six pointed Mason Masonic star right there. Okay. It's being brandished right in front of your face. Okay. And of course, the Freemasons are controlled, owned and operated by the bloop, Jesuit order. Hence the thumbnail again. Okay, we have had quite enough of this Chloe, who's he, what's it, whatever her name is. Okay, that is quite enough of this. Okay, you beg your pardon. Okay. All right, now we, now we go to the video part of it. I'm sorry I let that one uh, thing she said. I'm sorry. I, I was taking, I've wa I had to watch that video three times. In order to timestamp correctly when she cursed. Oh. See, you men, you men who are being led astray by that devil, you gotta be careful, men. You can't watch something like that. That woman is leading you to hell, claiming to stick up for you. Now, in the authorized version of the scriptures, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, okay? Now, if you are not saved, your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost, okay? If you are not saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you, your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God does not permanently dwell within you. What dwells in you is the spirit of, that, of this world, that spirit of Antichrist, okay? The spirit of man, all right? That's what dwells in you. Your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? But what is being addressed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 also is relative onto things of the body in general as well. Okay? So let's read. I shouldn't say relative, but is applicable. Not relative. Applicable also. I should say that. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9, on to the close of the chapter. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a reference unto the spiritual kingdom, not the actual physical kingdom. Okay? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, or neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, fornicators, 
having sexual relations and stuff like that outside of a marriage bed. Okay? Outside of a marriage bed. Not being married. Adultery is cheating on someone while in a relationship in the bond of marriage. Okay? All right? So we see fornicators, idolaters. And most of the idols that people worship are the ones that they look at in the mirror. Their own lusts, their own desires. Okay? Okay? Yes, idolatry does... This is supposed to be a statue, like a Marian statue, but idolatry is a lot deeper than just looking at statutes and statues and stuff like that. Okay, pornography can be an idol to you. Video games, television, smoking, drugs, yourself. Okay, all right. The sky is the limit, almost. All right, all right. And also here, okay, nor effeminate, effeminate. Women are to be feminine, okay? Women are supposed to act like ladies, okay? Women are to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Yes, they are. That's God's purpose for the woman to, um, to be, you know, to kind of basically run the family, to take care of the family and stuff like that. Those are noble things, worthwhile things in the sight of God. And God can bless a woman that does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is what a woman is to strive for. Not to control or have dominance over a man like Miss Chloe is doing in her subtle manner. Okay. So the effeminate is not women. What is the effeminate? Talking about men who act like women nor abusers of themselves with mankind, uh, sodomites. Sodomites. Okay? Nor thieves, nor covetous, because the Lord abhors the covetous. Okay? Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And that's spiritual. And such were some of you such were some of you, meaning this is addressed to those who are saved. If you're watching this and you're not saved, this verse 11 here does not apply to you, okay? Because you're still in your sin. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit, capital S, of our God, okay? All things are lawful for me, unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Of any. And this is a go-to verse for those who want to justify worshiping Catholicism one day in a year and neglecting another big hell day for Catholicism, which we will talk about on a later date. But uh, this is the go-to thing that they go to. Even those who are saved, born again, converted to the Church of the Living God, we can do anything that a lost person can do. All things are lawful for us. You can do anything you want, but not everything is expedient. Okay? It doesn't benefit you. It isn't a help to you. Not everything is. Okay? And we who are saved, we can do, because salvation and walking the line of sanctification is not a force. Okay? It's not a force. We who are saved can do the same sins that you lost people can do. But see, the Lord who is in us tells us, uh, hey, don't do that. I don't want you to do that. That's not, that, Don't do that. I'm telling you. Okay? See, we can do anything we can, but not all things are expedient. Okay? And note, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Addicted. You know that pornography is likened onto a drug addiction? And there are scientific facts on that because when you're watching pornography, the things of the blood circulates and the sexual tension and stuff like that and all that nonsense, all that, that's provable scientific stuff that happens when your eyes are being, when you are being stimulated visually by filth. Okay? All right? Don't you, don't you for one minute try to say, well, there's no scientific evidence to say that watching pornography is bad. Uh, 
if you are following me along. Church, uh, my brothers and sisters are. But if you are lost watching this, bear with me, okay? Because this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to compare Scripture with Scripture, okay? Um, Isaiah chapter 5. Um, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 23. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Justifying wickedness, which Miss Chloe does, okay? She didn't care if her man were watching pornography. She said if they were, if he were to go leave the bedroom to go watch pornography, then that might be a problem, yes. But the fact that she at all doesn't mind that her man watches pornography, so she doesn't mind her man taking things out on her that she, that is in place of her, even though she is the physical piece of meat? Do you see, do you see that deception, dear friend, of that kind of logic, that kind of dialectal, dialectic there? Do you see? Okay, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Now, that is true. Okay? All right? All right? God wants to save you. And God saves you today by him sealing you. You are sealed. Until the day of redemption. Once the Lord saves you, when you come unto him in his, on his terms, he seals you with himself and lives within you. Hence, the body was made for the Lord to dwell within. Okay? All right? We were made to have a relationship with the Lord. You read about that in Genesis. Okay? But what Paul says here... Now, the body is not for fornication. Physical, yes, but also spiritual. Because when you're watching pornography, you're not there physically with those persons on the screen. No, you are not. You mentally wish you were. But what happens when people watch pornography? Something does become physical, and we'll leave it at that. Okay? Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Okay? And God hath both, both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power, those of us who are saved, who are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, those who are saved. Okay? We are part of his body here on earth. Okay? We are not little Christs, but we are part of his body. Okay? You are not saved. Okay? You didn't come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having contrition, godly sorrow, manning up and taking responsibility that you died on, that you put him on the cross. It's your fault that he died and having fear of him, calling upon his name and he saved you. You're not saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Christ isn't in you. So this has nothing to do with you. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Now here, okay, here, here's the thing that is for both. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body, and two, saith he, shall be one flesh? Now that is a reference unto the physical. When you're not married... And uh, like when I was lost, um, I myself bought harlots, prostitutes. And yes, I was one with that prostitute, harlot. Okay? Yes, I was. Okay? What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh? Okay? See, the two be one flesh thing has a twofold thing. Yes, it is physical. But also, like in marriage, 
my wife and I, even though we're not constantly in the bed or anything like that, we are one. Okay, we are one flesh. I am to look at her as I love, I am to love my wife as I love myself. And she is to reverence me, her husband. That's being one flesh, one body together as me and my wife. Okay. And in the physical sense, you're being with someone who isn't your husband or your wife. And it's a one night stand or something. You're one flesh with that person. Okay. Physically. But in pornography, it's not physical. But all fornication is not physical. There's spiritual fornication. Because you wish you were the person doing that in the video. Whether you're, you're a man or whether you're a woman. Tell me I'm wrong. Hence, that's a fornication of the spiritual nature. Because you're getting Satan to entertain you. By doing that which is contrary to God. See how that works? But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now look at that. It says flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. What is that a reference unto? Um, you look on a, a maid to lust after her in your heart. You have already committed adultery in your heart already. You look at that one individual in anger. It's like, boy, I wish I had a meat cleaver so I could cleave his head in two pieces. Okay? Thought, even the foolish, the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? But see, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body okay now right there he is talking about a physical fornication but if you search the scriptures at all you will quickly realize that fornication is not just limited to physical okay there is spiritual fornication by you watching pornography watching two people who are not married or worse Two people who are sodomite, whether they be men or women, um, you are seen watching things that God does not approve of. Hence, a spiritual fornication. You're basically being one spirit with the devil who wants to see you in hell with him. And those memories, Jack, those memories. You know, the Lord can save you. But that doesn't mean that he will take away those memories. One of the things that I am plagued with to this day, going on, going on 15 years saved of my Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father. He has not removed the memories of sin of my past life. The memories of sin, looking at things, of setting wicked things before my eyes. Those could be used by Satan, messengers of Satan to buffet you, to keep you humble. You people, you men out there who are falling for this devil, you're playing with fire. And she is serving her father well. Let's continue. What? Now, verse 19 here does not apply for those of you who are not saved. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Okay? You're not saved. God doesn't live in you. Okay? You're saved. You're sealed unto the Holy uh, until the day of redemption. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay, so God dwells within you. You are not your own. You're not saved. Verse nineteen doesn't apply to you. Okay, nor does verse twenty. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay. Right? 
Now, also, go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, on to verse 21. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, capital S. Capital S Spirit means the Lord himself, okay? And the capital S Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Okay? But if ye be led of the capital S Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. And the only way you can truly be led of the Spirit is if He dwells within you. Okay? All right? Ye are not under the law. Interesting. Yeah. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery is listed first. Okay? Cheating on your spouse. Fornication having relations outside of a marriage bed, not being married in the context of marriage. Okay? Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strifes, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you wish, you can continue to read on um, about the fruit of the Spirit. But this video is not intended for those who are saved. Okay? All right? Okay, now... Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. Therefore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Again, this is talking for those of us who are saved. But while we are looking at this, dear friend, you're lost, okay? Number one, you need to be saved. Number two, you, should, you shouldn't be having, being fornicating with people unless, unless you're married. If you're married, the marriage bed is undefiled, okay? But you not being married, sleeping around with people, you're fornicating, Okay? All right? For ye know that ye for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctify and sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Verse 5 is a reference unto you lost people who will willy-nilly go into the sack with somebody. Well, I have high standards. But see, you, you're not married. And neither is she or he. And you want to get into the bed. Okay? No. God doesn't want that. God does not approve of that. Okay? That's evil. And you know... I really wish I could have said that I was a virgin before I met my wife. Because what happens? What happens when you, the Lord saves you and already you have been intimate with several women or whatever uh, before the Lord saved you? What happens? Memories. The comparative thing. You compare. Now some people praise the Lord that doesn't happen to. But what happens? You compare one with the other, don't you? That's why the Lord would rather have you be a virgin until you get your husband or your wife, see? Because that way, your only experience is in the sanctity of the marriage bed which the Lord has given, okay? But you have that outside of marriage 
as I did before I was saved, yes, so did the majority of you, brothers and sisters. And praise the Lord to those of you who have not, who are of the church of the living God. But what happens is the comparison, the comparing game happens. Okay? That's something to, to keep in mind. And which verse 5, in the lusts of concupiscence, animalistic lust. Okay? That's what that's addressing. Okay? We are to, our vessels, to hold them in sanctification and honor. Okay? That no man, verse 6, go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto, uh, unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us, those who are saved, his Holy Spirit, the Lord himself. See, you're getting angry wanting to justify sin. You're, you're, you're not angry at me, even though I might be adding to the fuel or whatever because of the way I speak, whatever. But the problem is, your problem is with God, who doesn't want you to be fornicating, who doesn't want you to be looking at pornography, who doesn't want you to have things cleaving to you, but would rather save you. Okay? Yes! God wants all people to be saved. But see, God has a condition for salvation. And see, and this is why I have a lot of respect to the atheists who contact me. Okay? Because, why? Let's go through this logic, okay? Uh, we might have discussed this previously in the other video, but we're going we're to do it again. God loves you unconditionally. God's not mad at you. But, if you don't just believe or whatever, but yet God loves you unconditionally. He loves everybody. But yet he's going to send people to hell to burn forever, right? And the atheist? Wait a minute. Wait, time out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, God loves everybody. But he's sending certain people to hell. But he loves everybody unconditionally. That don't make sense. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, dear friend. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, of course not. But see, here's, you know, and a lot of people like to go to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. And so many people take this out of context and just butcher this um, and overlooking conveniently the part of repentance. Now, this, for those of you who are lost, you don't, this isn't going to make any sense to you. This was said in a time when salvation was faith and works. Okay? Where eternal security was not there. How's that? Does that make sense? Okay? Today, you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? Manning up and taking responsibility that because of you, you put him on the cross. And you having the health scared out of you, you fear the Lord, and you call upon his name, and he saves you, and that he does save you. And when he saves you, he washes away your sins and his blood, and you are sealed until the day of redemption and a fell swoop. Okay? I made a new creature. Okay? But, but, in the Old Testament, eternal security was not there. Okay? It was a constant thing of works, okay? Does that make sense? Okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. That's, that's as simple as I could put it. So when we read Ezekiel 18, what we're looking at, remembering, you got and this will be helpful to you. When Ezekiel was written, it was written in a time where eternal security, which is available for us today, wasn't there in that time. But nonetheless, what is being said in Ezekiel 18, verse 23, where God says, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? God doesn't want you to go to hell. No, he doesn't. But there's a catch. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord, 
and not that he should return from his ways and live. Return. What does that mean? That means repent. That means repent. And see, a lot of these Christians out here say, well, repentance is a work. And they say to you, just believe. Well, thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay. And you got people like, some of you might have heard of this Ray Comfort, who says a lot of good, true things. But see, what Ray Comfort does is he says to people, you have to repent of all your sins. And guess what, Jack? You couldn't repent of your, all your sins, even if you tried. You couldn't. And that's not the repentance. That's not what it is. Okay? All right? Because you can't do that. You, as a lost sinner, you cannot give up your lying, your cheating, your adultery, your fornication, your drug habits, your serving Satan and worshiping Satan. You can't give that up on your own and then expect to go to the Lord and then for him to save you, which is what Ray Comfort teaches, as does the like of Paul Washer, young man. Okay? The repentance is, I'm a good person. <coughs> I'm not bad as so-and-so. I haven't, I don't hurt people. Okay, why do I need God? I ain't that bad. I, I haven't hurt anybody. I, I try not to lie. I do this. I, 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 I do good things. I do. I'm a good person. That's what, that's the repentance. That's the repentance. That you're a good person. And you're not. Uh, read Romans chapter 3. Okay, read Romans chapter 3. Paying close attention to verses 1 on to verse 18. That's your assignment, okay? Do that. All right? Okay? That's the repentance. Okay? And see, even in this dispensation, which those things are called, um, God wants repentance. You can't go to God thinking that you're a good person and worthy to be saved because you've never done anything. And you have. You have. You have. You have lied. You have cheated. You have stolen. You have looked upon a maid and committed adultery with her in your heart. Okay, you have looked at someone and murdered them to death with a, a cleaver in your own head. Okay, some of you have encouraged your girlfriend who you were fornicating with to commit murder and have an abortion. You are guilty. You are not a good person. That's the repentance, okay? And also while we're in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 31 on to verse 32. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? And again, under the law, when this was written, eternal security was not there. It was a continual act of sacrifice animal sacrifice okay it was continual because the lord would not did not permanently dwell in someone who came unto him broken of their self righteousness okay that was not there okay so when you got someone coming to you saying that this is a requirement for today and you're like i i can't give up my i can't do this on my own no you can't no you can't that's not what you need to be broken of, dear friend. Your self-righteousness. Which Miss Chloe is pumping you up in by telling you that looking at pornography is not evil. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn, repent yourselves, and live ye. Repent. Repent. Okay? Repent. And it's not, you, you don't give up X, Y, Z to get A, B, C. No. You're not a good person. There's none good. No, not one, man. And when you got a devil, 
patting you on your head, coaching you on in her sexual, seductive voice as you're running to a cliff to perch, to fall headlong to your death, all the while comforting you in it. You gotta get away from that, man. You gotta get away from that. And Chloe, if you if it is possible for you, you need to get saved. Because you know what? Woman, you're gonna have to give an account for everything you have done. And you are actively, and I think knowingly, guiding people to hell. Oh. You're in trouble, girl. I wish it were not so. But you are. And the love of God is Christ and him crucified. You know, when people say to you, you and another thing about atheists, you know, in John 3.16, <laughs> John 3.16, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most people know Matthew chapter 7. Um, about uh, Matthew, And you probably who are watching this know Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 yourself, don't you? Judge not that ye be not judged. <laughs> but you know, judge not lest ye be judged yourself because of that devil James Hetfield, right? It's judge not that ye be not judged. You know that better than John 3.16, which says, For God so loved, past tense, loved, past tense, the world, for God so loved the world that he gave, past tense, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thing is, Jesus hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. That's significant. Okay? But when somebody, a Christian, comes to you, says God loves you, and they go to this, um, loved is past tense. Gave is past tense. The love of God is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You want the love of God? You gotta go to the cross, man. There the love of God is. Christ and him crucified. There, this is East. That's the love of God. Christ and him crucified. Who died because of your sin that you committed. And it was your hand that nailed the nails into his hand. In his hands, in his feet. And put the crown of thorns on his head. It was you. It was your fault. Just like it w is my fault too. Okay? Yes, I put him on there too. Yes, I did. But see, the Lord broke me of my self-righteousness. I'm not a good person. I can't save myself. And it's my fault that he's on that cross, that he was on that cross, that he died, buried, and rose again. The third. It was because of me. And I'm scared of the Lord. I fear the Lord. At the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to have to give an account for him. Uh, account to him, excuse me. Okay, I'm going to have to give an account to him. And I fear the Lord. Because if the Lord didn't save me, I'd be going to hell where you are. And if God's love is not for you, the only way you're going to get God's love, dear friend, is at Calvary going to the cross. You got a Christian coming around saying, God loves you unconditionally. Common sense tells you that's a bunch of hooey. Okay? Common sense tells you, wait, that can't be. And you're right. It's not. There is a condition for God's love. There is a condition for His love. You have to go the way of the cross, dear friend. But if you don't, you boot the door out of the way and go some other way by some putts telling you just believe. Oh, repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. Just believe and receive. What about Romans chapter... Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about... Just believe. And you'll be sealed. 
well then, okay, then shouldn't I live, uh, try to abstain from all, of it? yeah, you should, but don't worry if you don't, because you're once saved, always saved. See, that's the devil of easy believism, those devils that are in easy believism, excuse me, uh, telling you, lying to you, and trying to make you comfortable in sin, very similar to what Miss Roma Army Cleo is doing. See, you don't want to come to the Lord on his terms. You don't want to come to the Lord, huh? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, dear friend. <laughs> if I can get there. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 21. You don't come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him you call upon his name and he saves you. Okay? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Mm -hmm. Deep down somewhere within you, you know it's not right. Deep down within you, you know what sin is and what evil is. You do. But see, you justify that sin. You justify that evil. Okay? There is no such thing as a dead conscience. You can sear, like, you know, you take your ribeye and you put it on the grill and then you sear it and then you turn it. That you can do to your conscience, but you can't kill it. Even people like Richard Ramirez, Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, who is in heaven. <gasps> you think Jeff Dahmer's in heaven? And you think I'm going to... I know you're going to hell. If you're lost, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, the gay cannibal, right? Yeah, he's in heaven because he repented of his self-righteousness and he called upon the name of the Lord and he's saved. And you're saying you're better than Jeffrey Dahmer, aren't you? Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What does that mean? You're, you're a fool who says that, that believes in evolution, that millions and billions and trillions of years ago, nothing all, all of a sudden exploded. And or something like a small dot on a page. I've, I've run into this. And it's like, okay, where did this come from? Where did this come from? Where did, it, where did that energy come from? I don't know. Where did God come from? God is self-existent. God had no beginning or no end. He just is. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Yes, God is. He is. All right? He had not a beginning of days or an end of life, okay? He just is, okay? He is. He is. That's the thing about God, okay? But yeah, you believe in evolution? How can evolution explain the complexity of the retina of the eye? Hmm? Hmm? How can it do that? How can evolution explain the electric, the electricity of the heartbeat? Hmm? How can evolution explain that you and I have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, the image of God? We are made in the image of God. What does that mean? God has a spirit, has a soul. And has a body. These three are one. Okay? First John chapter 5, verse 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Godhead. Okay? The Godhead. And these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. You, whether you want to accept this or not, you have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. For the invisible things of 
Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, just know about Him, know of Him, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Foolish, behaving and acting and living as if you say in your heart there is no God. Okay? In Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath, hath loved us, past tense, the crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, and the bloodshed on the cross, God loved and gave, okay, you want the love of God, you got to go to Calvary to get it, boy, okay, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sweet and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, like that little Chloe does, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For ye know, talking, talking on to save people, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You gotta go to Calvary, dear friend. You gotta be broken of that self righteousness of yours, thinking that you're a good person. Okay? Come, let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Let's talk about it. All right? Let's talk about it. And see, if you hear the true gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that he shed his blood to make an atonement for your sins, and you reject that. You're a child of disobedience. God's wrath is for you. God's love is not for you. You want God's love, you got to go to the cross. Okay? There is God's love. But if you don't want to go to the cross and be a thief and a robber and climb up some other way and say that you're a good person and justify your sin and listen to people who you should not be listening to, Telling you it's okay to watch pornography. It's not cheating. You, It's okay. I don't care if my man, go ahead, running off of a cliff. You're a child of wrath. God's love is not for you, dear friend. His wrath is for you. Because the Christ who is being offered to you by Christianity is not the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. It is not. That will be fulfilled in that man of sin, the son of perdition, who many of you who get left behind are going to see. Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Obviously, this is talking on to people who are actually saved, okay? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, put down, kill! Therefore, your members which are upon earth, starts with fornication. Physical, yes, and spiritual. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And you look at all those, dear friend, those are all idolatry. It's 
It's all idolatry. It's all covetousness. It's all idolatry. Why? Because those things that are mentioned that we as the church of the living God are told to mortify, put down, to kill, those are all flesh-centered. For which things sake, the sake of what? Uh, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And for the saved, and the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Yes, I was like you once before. And see, and this is something that Chloe there was touching on in her video. Where, well, you're going to sin anyway. She didn't say this, of course. But, you know, we can't cease from sin. And that is true. That is true. That is true. But that doesn't mean that we strive, strive to please our Lord Jesus Christ by adhering to the authorized version of the scriptures for the doctrine relative for us today. Okay? That doesn't mean that, okay? You don't throw caution into the wind and say, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. That's what the easy believers of devils tell you to do, okay? Not we who are saved of the church of the living God. But you see, in Hebrews chapter 13, one verse, verse four, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay? Now, Hebrews 13, 4. About the bed is honorable in the context of marriage. What does that mean? If you're a husband and wife, anything you want to do as husband and wife, as husband and wife, in the marriage bed, God made it. God's that God is okay with that. Okay? Anything you want to do. You can basically do. Not crazy, dumb, stupid things that you get from the ideas of watching satanic pornography. Okay? And all pornography is satanic. Okay? No. But the bed, the marriage bed is undefiled. Okay? Alright? But see, in 1 John chapter 2, something that pornography puts off onto you. That and see, and something that this Chloe uh, was touching on, okay, about how she doesn't care if her man watches porn or not. And she also brought up that saying about it doesn't matter where you get your appetite so long as you come home to eat. A ask your wife, seriously, if you're married. A ask your husband if you're married. Okay, babe, I was out all day looking at other women, fantasizing having relations with them, and I'm going to come home to the bed that is undefiled and imagining them taking that out on you. You know, you, you know what? And I, this wouldn't happen, but just for the sake of this argument, if I were to, if you, if I were to say that under my wife, my wife would be like, come here. Bam! And rightfully so. That's crazy. That's stupid. Okay, that's stupid. Okay? And a saying like that, I believe, also is a construct of the women's suffrage movement. Okay? Uh, we were watching something on that, but, oh, boy, that's very difficult to watch. Okay? But, okay, in First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, Verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of the flesh. You watching pornography, you were you wish that was you. No, I don't. You lie and your breath stink. And I can smell it all the way over here. Okay? The lust of the flesh. 
lust of the eyes. You just can't watch. You just can't stop watching it, can you? And the pride of life. Oh, I watch porn, and uh, my my girlfriend and I we watch it together. You're a couple of sick devils. You you need to. Oh wow, you need to come to the Lord ASAP. That if pornography is a dynamic in your relationship, <laughs> boy, that's got to be a strong union right there, buddy. And not strengthened by God, the Father. If it is strengthened, it's by the little G-God of this world, Satan. And then that. But see, the thing that people like to touch on, well, it's like, I, I, I can't. And Brad, hey, even in this video, you've said I, you can't do it yourself either. That's right. Romans chapter 7. Paul, who was the greatest of the church of the living God, who was a sinner, who was chief, who sinned daily, and also had moments of hypocrisy. Unlike people from England and some people from Canada, which are never hypocrites. But, uh, yes, Paul was the example unto all of us of the Church of the Living God. He was the apostle unto the Gentiles. Well, Peter was the apostle unto the Jew. But it was Paul's example given to us today that we are to, you know, okay. All right. That's how we're supposed to do it. But see, Paul, okay, even though he was saved, even though he was the greatest of the church of the living God. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay. He was our example. The Lord set him forth as our example. Okay. As our example. Paul, okay? Scripture even confirms that, okay? And if you're going to compare someone of nowadays with Paul, <laughs> uh, never mind that. But Romans chapter 7, want to know what Paul said? Verse 15 on verse 25. For that which I do I allow not, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. What is that talking about? Sin. Paul says, for that which I do, I allow not. Sin. Paul sinned. If you got, you, you know, some of you lost people, you hear about Christians say, you got to stop sinning, and I don't sin anymore. <laughs> Laugh at them. Call them a liar. And they just sinned in front of you. They lie. Okay? Paul sinned. I guess Paul didn't know about sinless perfection, did he? Okay. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. Okay, okay. Don't be confused. What he is saying is, first part of that is, for that which I do, I allow not. Sin. He didn't want to sin. For what I would, that do I not. He didn't want to sin. He wanted to be sinlessly perfect. But what I hate, that do I. Sin. I can't stay perfect. Okay? I, I can't. I mean, and this is something that uh, Chloe was uh, talking about. But see, her angle was to, well, since you can't stop, throw it all into the wind and just go with it, boy. Like easy believism does. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. But hey, don't worry. You're saved anyway, so go ahead. Don't, yeah, you shouldn't. But see, that's not the attitude that we who are of the church of the living God are supposed to have. I have already proved to you, lost man, lost woman, if you're watching, about what the scripture says, how we're to mortify, kill, put down the deeds of our flesh. Okay? All right? We are to strive. We are to strive to, to be, you know, to... Please the Lord. But we soon find out that we can. For these same reasons that Paul is mentioning. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And it is from the law, you know, the Ten Commandments, where you find out what sin is. Okay? Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And we all have a spirit 
a soul, and a body. We're made in the image of God. God has a spirit, a soul, and a body, okay? And flesh, which is of the earth, dirt, is sinful. So the sin is right here. You know that flesh that you're Googling over, that you're watching that porn? Okay? Do you understand? Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Even, even though it dresses its nice pretty hair and puts a bull ring in its nose and has satanic tattoos all over them and dresses as a whore and shows off and looks my, whatever. It's basically a piece of meat that you're oogling over that. Do you realize that? For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. I don't want to sin. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. And there is none good but who? God. Okay? So Paul is saying, okay, I, I can't stop sinning. This, this cursed flesh of mine, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at that. You're walking outside, it's summertime, and you see these little girls dressed like whores. It's like, I oh, just keep, just... And someone is like, oh, you, I can't look at you. Or you're looking at something online or something. It's like, oh. But then again, we can't live in a cave. Right? Right? That's why we have to have our eyes focused on Jesus. That's why we have to have our nose in the scriptures daily. Okay? Okay? Is, it, is this making sense to you, lost man? I hope it is. Okay? And see... What Paul is addressing here, if you're lost, has nothing to do with you anyway. But the point is, what Miss Chloe was getting about was, well, you know, it's you're going to do it anyway, so just go ahead and throw it into the wind. It's okay. No, it isn't. Paul didn't want to sin, but he knew that he couldn't stop sinning. He didn't want to sin, but he knew he couldn't stop sinning. Okay? Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. It's like, okay, I, I, I try. I try. You know, even if you lock yourself into a cave, the thought of foolishness is sin. Those memories come back to haunt you, right? It's like, and you're sitting there, well, well man, dude, why even try? Shh, shush. Listen. Now, if I do that, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Evil is present with you. Why? Because your spirit and soul are in here, this body. Okay? Flesh is sinful. Okay? Flesh is sinful. And it's that very flesh, well-ordered, well-firmed and defined, tatted up to the moon, <laughs> pierced with the bull ring. Okay? Whatever. God can forgive you of those things. You didn't know if you watched the previous video about tattoos. You watch that, you're no longer in ignorant of tattoos and stuff like that. You look in scripture, uh, the thing about the ear uh, piercings, you know, a slave put their ear to a wall or to a doorpost or whatever, or a servant, and they took an all and boom! Okay, there you go. All right, but, all right, your spirit and soul are in sinful flesh. So, I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Okay? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And the inward man is a reference unto who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Even though that is not capitalized. Someone is like, well, why isn't that capitalized? I don't know. But the hidden man of the heart for someone who is saved is the Lord Jesus Christ. The inward man is to be the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Who is your inward man? The spirit of man? The spirit of this earth? The spirit of the devil? That spirit of Antichrist? But I see another law in my members, talking about flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. It's like, no matter how I try, I can't stop sinning. This is Paul, the greatest of us. And the greatest in showing that he was also the weakest. Because when you consider what Paul the Apostle did, dear brother and sister, you, my brothers and sisters, he was the least of all. He even said it himself. He was a sinner who was chief, just like I am, just like you are. Look at how mightily the Lord used him. Look at all he went through. But yet he counted himself nothing. Nothing. And he also, in this, in Romans chapter 7, the heart of it, I can't stop. I can't stop. So then you go with what Miss uh, Chloe is saying. Ah, check it all up, man. Go for it. Live it up. Or the easy believism devil. It's like, okay, you shouldn't, but don't worry about it, man. You're saved. You just believed. Repentance was a work anyway. Calling on the name. Don't worry. You just believe and uh, believe one that there's one God. You do well. The devils also believe. But don't worry. Don't, you shouldn't, but don't worry if you do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? <laughs> See, those of us who are saved, that's brokenness. That's what you need. That's the repentance. I, I know I'm not good at all because I see, I read what is good and I can't live up to that. I can't do that. Lord, you're going to have to lead me and guide me. Because I can't do that. I can't do that. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the body, of, uh, serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now, Paul is not saying, okay, so I can I justify it in my mind, so there I go with it. No, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is, I know I'm saved. I know I can't stop sinning. I'm going to strive to, to walk according to the gospel. I'm going to strive, but I know that I'm going to fail. I know that. But I'm going to strive mightily to walk according to the gospel. But I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. And see, babes in Christ can really get hung up with this because you're a babe and you fail. You're like devastated, right? Especially if you hear some schmuck talking to you about, you got to stop sinning. And it's like, oh, you know? You're going to sin. You're going to sin. Okay? When you sin, you repent of your sin. Go to the Lord. It's like, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I got no excuse. Please forgive me. And he is able and just to forgive you your sin. You come to him and ask him forgiveness for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, what Paul is saying is, we've already looked at it. He doesn't want to sin. But because of this, he's going to sin. So that's what he means. He, he's telling you, as long as your spirit and soul is in this, you're going to sin. Okay? And he talks about that. You know, you go to the Lord in repentance. Okay? And in 1 John chapter 1, talks about that. You know, he is just enabled to forgive you your sins. You go to him, you sin, you go to him in repentance. He forgives you. You get a clean slate. All that stuff. Yes. 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 
but you are going to sin. You are. You are. And what he is saying in verse 25 is, you're going to sin. There is no such thing as sinless perfection on this earth. Okay? Strive serving God, but realize that no matter what you do, you're going to sin. And that way it doesn't debilitate you so. Because sin is very debilitating, isn't it? That's what he's talking about. He's not justifying sin, dear friend. Okay? Okay. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. We're almost done. Okay? You gotta remember, dear friend. There hath no temptation. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but, uh, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Way of, to escape. Now, if you're not saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, okay, <laughs> You're not going to be given that way of escape. Okay? You're supposed to submit yourself first unto God. And unless you submit yourself first unto the Lord, how are you going to try at all to resist the devil? Huh? Okay? But with the temptation, with temptation, there is a way of escape, you know. You're lost in watching pornography. You can always turn it off. You're oogling at some girl who's probably underage but looks like a whore. And you're listening to a devil saying it's not a bad thing to look and oogle at that while they're promoting their bodies. Uh, you can look away. You can run, literally run. You can. But as Proverbs 7 talks about, and Satan, who transformed into an angel of light. Remember how we talked about all those beautiful stones for a covering that he had? It looks so beautiful, doesn't it? It looks, sin looks so beautiful, so bright and shining, doesn't it? I have learned, and going on 15 years, saved. 15 or 16, actually. Uh, August, uh, April 28th, 2008 is when I was, when the Lord saved me. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> with every sin, in retrospect, looking back, the Lord always provided a way to escape. To walk away, to pray, to run, to shut it off, to shut up, to do whatever. And those of you who are saved, you realize that too. When you mess up and sin, when you, and this takes courage. When you ask the Lord, it's like, Lord, I know what you say, and your word is truth. Where was the way of escape that I missed, or that I chose not to see? That's the thing. It's not that you miss it. You choose not to see it. And then he shows it to you. And it's uh, plain as the nose on Jimmy Durante's face. You know, meaning big nose. And then you're like, oh. And then you feel even worse. Every single solitary time that I have ever seen in my life, when I have the, the guts, and even when I don't, Lord, I know you said you give a way to escape. What was that way of escape that I did not want to see? And you talk about being chopped down to size, boy. See, that takes humility. It takes brokenness. Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. We're almost done. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, for those of us who are saved, we are to look for these things. But see, Satan has deceived so many of you that what pornography is lovely. Watching two people fornicate in a porno is lovely. Looking at some harlotly scat, you know, woman dressed like a harlot walking down the road, that's lovely. And you're married? Googling at that? You know, like, <laughs> and then justifying it? That's lovely? Come on now. Come on. You're not that dense. Even though you'd like to be. Even though you claim to be. You're not that. You can't be that dense. Whoever you are, you can't be that dense. But see, you're being fed another Christ. Not the Christ of the scriptures. You're being fed another Christ. So it's no wonder. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 12. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And Satan, okay, Satan savors the things that be of men, not of God. Okay, we, we covered that in the previous video. Okay. But they that are after the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally, fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnal means fleshly. Going after all that flesh that you see in pornography, huh? How do I get away from it? Turn it off. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. The hard part is the temptation. You know, if you're addicted to pornography, maybe you have to put away your cell phone. Maybe you have to get rid of your computer. Well, I don't, well, I need it. Well, then you got to do something, Jack. Okay? Because if that temptation is there, okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And that carnal mind is what Chloe is preaching unto you people. She is a minister of righteousness. She is. Yeah. Because her father is Satan. Okay? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that Spirit. Okay? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. The circumcision made without hands. That's what that's talking about. Okay? But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. God that dwells within you will make alive your mortal body so that you can do these things to give you the physical strength to withstand, to abstain from all appearance from evil, to run the other way, to turn off, to have the courage to strengthen the Lord, not your own, but in the Lord. To put away these things. Okay? <clears throat> Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And finally, one verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Just one verse. 
This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Can you do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. But see, the Lord will lead you and guide you into all truth. And the Lord, the Lord is there. His salvation is there. You got to go according to his terms. Hopefully, and I plan on this being the last time that I address this. And thank you for making me aware. Thank you for pointing things out. Please don't don't do that anymore. I want this is two now in consecutive videos that this has been addressed. This person, this devil has been addressed twice in a consecutive thing of days. Uh, not, not two, uh, you know, but the past two videos have been on this specifically. Nama! Okay? So, that's going to be it for this video. If you've made it through all this, okay, and you're lost and you're a uh, disciple of this wicked woman, um, come. Let us reason together, you and I. And you, Chloe, you watch this. You don't care about your danger, do you? You don't realize just what you're doing, or do you? I believe you do. I really believe you do. Because you have to have some inkling of truth to be this deceptive. If there's a chance for you that the Lord save you, may he smash you to smithereens. May he break that feminist pride that you are hiding under the veil of submissiveness. And may he break you. Because you know what, Chloe? If the Lord were to save you, you could be a true woman of God. Even with these things that you have done to yourself, you could still be a true woman of God. I personally, uh, all the evidence I've seen of you, and unfortunately, I've seen a little too much. A lot of the evidence shows to the contrary, but the impossible is possible with God. Men, get, get, get away from this. Thank you for watching this if you do. See you in the next video.